The panel chair is Dr. Masuda Misa, Professor Emeritus of the University of Tsukuba. She's also a research supervisor of SETREP's program, JST. Dr. Masuda, please. Thank you for the introduction. It is a great honor for me to chair this session. But due to time constraint, we are already 25 minutes behind the schedule. So let me omit the brief uh, introduction of the lectures uh, already presented. And let me move directly to the discussion. So based on the lectures, we would like to discuss two major common issues with our distinguished speakers. Uh, first, about the development of soil and fertilization management technologies for the future of food in sub-Saharan Africa. What are the common challenges and changes necessary to achieve soil health for truly sustainable food security? And what kind of technologies needed to be developed? And secondly, the challenges and solutions for the dissemination of soil and fertilization management technologies to improve the livelihoods, particularly of small-scale farmers. What are the common challenges to disseminate soil and fertilization management technologies? Uh, these are the two major common uh, questions. And then now I would like to ask the panelists, uh, quest, uh, panelists to uh, each questions along these two major issues, and then depending on their expertise and experience. Let's now turn to our panelists. And first, Professor Nakawa. Uh, as a soil specialist, not only in Africa, but also in other tropical regions, you put an emphasis on the necessity in understanding basic soil properties and careful observation of soil response against human impacts. So could you give us your message on how soil management should be particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa in the future from the viewpoints of both the environment, uh, conservation and food productivity? So Dr. Fnakawa, please. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. As I introduced in my presentation, among three, uh, among the three typological soils, I could say that the agriculture development of volcanic soils and even oxygen is promising if appropriate management is applied. So therefore, in these soils, the main focus should shift from simply high production to environmental protection with minimal soil degradation. And as most of you already realized, the most challenging issue is the technical development in the widely distributed sandy soils. I suppose we should first choose the priority of technology according to the water availability, because in many cases, the agriculture on sandy soils in this area suffers from water deficiency as well. If they have enough water resources, either precipitation, surface or groundwaters, the nutrient management could be a primary concern and development of inorganic or organic resource application has enough reality. Thank you, Dr. Nakawa. I'm sorry, I missed you uh, some part with a very, uh, maybe the, 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 the program of the microphone. Uh, but anyway, uh, Let's confirm that uh, you put an emphasis on the water issue and then the rainfall cannot be controlled. So it mm. means the necessity mm. of irrigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but usually, irrigation mm. not for available mm. So if the water is enough, we can focus only on the fertilizer problem. Mm -hmm. But if there is some water problem, maybe <laughs> I, I think it is very difficult if even we apply enough fertilizer, if we develop the fertilizer application, mm -hmm. mm, the problem is not to, cannot be solved only in the agriculture sections. But, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Funakawa, for sharing your vision on how soil management in Sub-Saharan Africa should be in the future. And then uh, let me move to uh, Dr. Tsujimoto. Uh, and then as a specialist in crop science, you have developed uh, 
not only P dipping, very unique P dipping technology, but also you also developed uh, various rice varieties uh, suitable for Madagascar's environment. And then may I ask um, about the, the uniqueness of, of your project is not only the technological development, but also you have been working with partner governments, development assistance organizations such as JICA, and farmers and the media to promote uh, your findings, your uh, the created new technologies uh, through your project. So could you tell us about your tips on how to successfully collaborate with sectors other than research? Uh, Dr. Tsujimoto, please. Uh, thank you. That's that's very kind of you saying that our project mm. is uh, very good at building such mm. multi-sectoral mm. collaboration. Uh, one reason I think can be explained by the scheme of SATREPS itself, which requires in-depth communication and common vision with JICA and the target country at the stage of proposal uh, submission. And this matching process between what researchers want to do and then what the government of target country needs facilitates such collaboration. And I suppose we selected a good and simple matching target mm -hmm. for all partners that was to increase rice productivity, which is simple, but the major staple and the key for the poverty reduction of the country. Mm -hmm. And then also that also had, we, our research group had a scientific advantage on. Therefore to build up the common and win-win vision uh, with a multi-sectoral partner from the beginning of the project is one key factor. And another key factor that I kept in mind was uh, patience throughout the project. Mm -hmm. It is sometimes challenging to let people in other sectors understand our scientific, scientific findings and visions. Mm -hmm. And besides policy makers such as uh, uh, ministers and high-level officials, and also the JICA staff members change so often in the speed much faster than what uh, we can normally expect in the scientific uh, uh, progress. Uh, of course, we try to speed up uh, much, uh, to deliver the output as much as possible. But at the same time, uh, I, I tried uh, every time go and visit and explain about the project whenever uh, any personal shift occurs. So I also developed uh, different slides uh, depending on who I talk to uh, in the way they get interested in our findings. So this is a time consuming and extra work for those who want to just uh, focus on writing papers. But I patiently worked on the communication throughout the project. So the patients with passion and probably some gentle smile when presenting mm -hmm. is a very important key, I believe to develop the such multi-sectoral collaboration in good way. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Dr. Tsujimoto. Indeed, such patience cannot be seen from your publication and presentations. So, but it is a very important point that you, you put an emphasis. And then uh, maybe we can also learn from your such experience. So now let me ask Dr. Nagumo, who is a soil scientist, and then uh, promoting agricultural research in Burkina Faso, the soil of which is categorized to sandy soil, poor sandy soil, according to uh, Professor Funakawa's presentation. And then uh, you have conducted a unique project, also unique project and developed uh, methods for effective utilization of the country's phosphate rock for agriculture. So as the price of fertilizers uh, is uh, increasing recently, uh, so would you share with us your perspective and the message on the importance of locally available resources utilization to improve soil fertility? Dr. Nagumo, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Masuda. Uh, as I presented, uh, phosphate resources is, are localized in Africa. Mm -hmm. I believe that their wise use is in, very important at each country. At the same time, the establishment of regional or continental supply chain of fertilizer in Africa is also important. Mm. Therefore, I consider that the meaning of local fat production includes regional and continental production. Nitrogen is also important nutrient together with phosphate. Currently, for example, Nigeria is increasing its production capacity using its natural gas resources. 
At the same time, nitrogen resource is universe in the air and everywhere. Efficient utilization of leguminous crop and other nitrogen fixation can reduce requirement of nitrogen fertilizer, as other presenter already uh, pointed out. In our conservation agriculture research in the past, we have used mukuna, hairy vetch, and pigeon pea as either intercrop or relay crop. All were effective to increase in targeting crop yield with reduced fertilizer dose. For example, hairy vetch could turn over to the soil more than 100 kg nitrogen as biomass nitrogen. I believe that the combination of utilization of African phosphate resource and nitrogen fixation plant can contribute considerably to increasing agricultural product productivity in Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nagumo. So I expect uh, the African phosphate rock you developed uh, can be used in the next Toyota Tsushio Corporation's uh, Baraka product in the near future. <laughs> and uh, your successful corporation uh, can be developed through this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Nagumo. So now let us hear from Mr. Wada, Toyota Tsushio Dr. Wada of Toyota Tsushio Corporation. So in your presentation, you pointed out the importance of providing appropriate types of fertilizer in needs for crops and soils at affordable price and at accessible price uh, represented by the phrase uh, whenever, uh, wherever it needs, baraka is available for Kenyan farmers. It is very impressive uh, phrase. And then uh, I think the performance sometimes uh, better than the government's. <laughs> activities and then uh, I found, uh, I realized the possibility uh, created by the private uh, sectors. Not only, we, we often rely on the public sector's law, but private sector sometimes can do better than uh, the public sector. So, uh, but uh, to make Baraka, uh, mm, how do you call that? To make the Baraka uh, to the farmers, to, to how to make the farmers accustomed with purchasing Baraka fertilizer. I think there should also be a great effort uh, behind your success uh, commercialization of the product like uh, Dr. Tsujimoto's patients. You, also, you may also have some tips to make it, uh, to make it uh, distrib widely distributed among, among Kenyan farmers. So could you please share uh, such, uh, how do you call that? The, your, your efforts behind the achievement, please. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Masuda. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, I'm very interested, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Nagumo's uh, mm -hmm. phosphate rock. So maybe that we can also the, uh, find out the right fertilizer or the, the fertilizer material uh, available in Kenya. But anyway, uh, to answer your question, the, yes, the, uh, of course, we made uh, uh, many effort uh, through the season. So the, uh, we did uh, many the farmers uh, seminar and also the field trial. But uh, uh, those field trial is not just to convince the, uh, the farmer we did a trial. The importance is uh, actually still the, uh, the word of mouth in African farmers. The once the, this part, uh, farmer is successful, then the uh, farmer next door is very interested. So the uh, network is quite important. How we can disseminate the information is important. So the, uh, sometimes the, uh, the, uh, the simple message is quite, quite workable. So the fertilizer are called Baraka. The Baraka is a, a blessing uh, in Swahili. So the using Baraka, then you have the good agricultural productivity. That simple message quite important. And also the uh, partnership uh, is quite important. Yes, uh, as a private sector, uh, we did our private sector part, but uh, we need the collaboration or the support uh, from the government or the uh, multinational institution and also NGO like uh, Sasaka Fund or maybe like uh, Agra. So collaboration is quite important. 
So the uh, target is uh, how we can increase the uh, agriculture and farmers' productivity and also the, their wealth. So the uh, so we are we are very interested in continuing to working with uh, all the uh, all the uh, institution, and we are very looking forward to the uh, private partner private public partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wada. Maybe this is the largest achievement of today's <laughs> uh, opportunity. And then uh, let me move to the last uh, speaker, Dr. Stella Kabiri of Sasakawa Africa Association, Ethiopia. So, Dr. Stella, you are a specialist in production ecology and resource conservation and have worked as a researcher in technology extension and as a research director at the National Agricultural Research Organization in Uganda. So you have worked extensively uh, with farmer groups, policy makers, and other stakeholders uh, on the dissemination of climate smart agricultural technologies. So can you share your message on the perspectives needed for inclusive technology development and dissemination involving beneficiaries? Sorry to make such a broad question, but please. Okay, thank, thank you very much uh, for that question. Indeed, one of the ways that uh, we can in, uh, increase the, the broad perspective of technologies in Africa is, first of all, considering the youth, uh, because they cover a large percentage of Africa. For instance, uh, around 60% of the African population are below the age of 25. And now when we are talking about uh, improving soil health, uh, it, this improving has to be taken over by also the next uh, generation because uh, the land is not increasing, the populations have increased, the land has also not increased, and uh, it is, needs to be held uh, in a way that, uh, that uh, it produces uh, for the next, uh, for the future. So one of the ways is that, uh, like we, we had the previous sticker meeting on the 26th, talking about uh, uh, technologies, digitizing uh, technologies. With the digitization, we are able to reach more people than uh, than a normal extension person would, including increasing e extension using dig digital platforms. And these days, when it comes to soil, there is uh, the, like we saw from our, one of our previous presenters, we cannot just uh, uh, one one size does not fit all when it comes to soil. Uh, soil improvement. Uh, the, the farming systems are different. A farmer that is next to the other one, the soils are not the same at all. So they are, they are, there is need to improve technologies that, uh, that test soil and some of this can be done digitally. And recently there are, there are new technologies such as artificial intelligence that, uh, that I mean a farmer can take a picture with his uh, mobile phone and know what kind of of, of, of nutrients that are lacking, and he's able to get an interface using an e-technology. E so some of these things are the areas that we are, as SAA, we are embracing so that we are able to reach a higher population. And also the, the young generation, they are really tech savvy, they like technology, and they, are, they, they will be able to be attracted to such uh, technologies and techniques when we promote them. So this is an area that SAA is really looking at uh, very seriously. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kabiri. And then, uh, well, uh, it is a very good opportunity to uh, have a, such opportunity. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is very nice for me to have such an opportunity to listen to the uh, various activities of SAA. And then may I ask an additional question among, about, among uh, various uh, uh, how do you call that, efforts uh, conducted by SAA, which, which uh, activity was most successful according to your evaluation? I think SAA has had a large footprint in Africa for mm -hmm. a very long time, 16 mm -hmm. years. And uh, with their technologies, we have seen a lot of yield improvements in the various mm -hmm. uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And they, they the technologies they have been promoting specifically for crops have been uh, targeting staple crops of various countries mm -hmm. and also cell health improvement. And uh, the, the issue of, uh, of uh, 
of giving um, inputs uh, to farmers has really been helpful because uh, most of African countries are very low input resource. Yeah. And uh, because the soils are poor, they really respond to inputs really, really fast. And this has had a very good uh, increment in the, in the yield of most African staple crops where SAA has had its uh, footprints. And, and we hope that we are going to continue with this trajectory as we are taking care of the soil. Because the soil, the soil is the base and there's a limitation. If mm -hmm. it is not taken care of, then these, uh, these efforts we have done can take us uh, uh, backwards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. So the topic returns back to soil issue again. And then yes. let, let me conclude uh, this, ses this session now. So thank you to all panelists for their insightful comments based on their experience and based on the discussion with the panelists. We would like to propose the following three points as outputs of today's event. Actually, we have much more outputs, but the, 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 the the, the output selected by the organizer was first examples of soil and manual management technologies that can both bridge sustainable productivity and restore soil health to achieve truly sustainable food security were presented and the need for further technological development was identified. So second, there is no one size fits all solution. It's quite true and for both upland and wetland farming and it was confirmed that there is a need for soil and fertilizer management technologies and dissemination methods that are suited to local agriculture, soil and socioeconomic conditions and that can be practiced by small scale farmers. So in order to develop them, it was confirmed that there is a need for collaborative cooperation among related organizations and for the development of human resources who will be responsible for the future of food in Africa. So we received other questions from the, the online participants, but quite unfortunately, we ran out of time. So we will take them up at another time. That concludes. So this concludes the panel discussion. And then thank you very much uh, to all the panelists for your comments and insights on the issues we presented here. So I'll, I now would like to turn the proceeding back to the moderator, Ms. Tanaka. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Masuda and all the panelists. Lastly, Dr. Nakashima Kazuo, Program Director, Food Program, JUCAS, will make some concluding remarks. Dr. Nakashima, please. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today in the TICAT 8 official side event organized by JILCAS. In this event, we are able to address the great challenges of shaping the future of sustainable agriculture in Africa by focusing on soil management. Let me thank all the speakers for their excellent presentations and more importantly, for sharing their efforts toward achieving soil health which is a key constraint to improving farm productivity and farmer livelihood in Sub-Saharan Africa. We would like to thank Dr. Masuda for moderating a very insightful panel discussion, and of course, the panelists for sharing their valuable perspectives on the issues presented here. In line with the uh, overall goal of TICAT 8, uh, three outputs were identified at the, this side event for achieving truly sustainable food security in Africa. The third in particular is that the technology development and dissemination requires a cooperation of related organizations and development of human resources who will be uh, responsible for the future of food in Africa. This is in line with the importance of collaboration between Japan and Africa and local capacity building to realize sustainable, sustainable growth, which was reaffirmed in the uh, Tunis Declaration adopted at TICAT 8 the day before yesterday. 
We hope that this event will serve as an opportunity to share our vision with domestic and international research and development partners, governmental agencies and private sectors to promote collaboration among related organizations and to pursue uh, soil fertility management solutions contributing to healthy soil regenerative development pathways in Africa. We strongly hope that by creating healthy soil that will lead to improved human health, we can achieve stable and sustainable food security in Africa. Including this ticket eight side event, I'd like to thank again our speakers, panelists, and moderator for their valuable contribution to this event. On behalf of JILCAS, I would also like to express our gratitude to the support provided by the Japan Science and Technology Agency, JST, and the Japan International, International Cooperation Agency, JICA. And lastly, thank you to all participants from around the world who accessed this event and joined us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Nakashima. This ends the TCAD 8 official side event, Managing African Soil for Food Security and Environmental Sustainability, Opportunities and Challenges of Agronomy to Solve Low Fertility Nutrient Bottlenecks. We wish to thank all the viewers. Thank you very much to all the speakers for your wonderful presentations. I hope you have a pleasant day ahead. Thank you. Thank you.